Hello guys and gals and welcome to another episode of Unique Items. Today we're going to be looking at proof that shield barbarians are not just a myth. Uh, this is the Sword Guard Executioner's Sword. Now the Sword Guard Executioner's Sword is a very unique weapon that has access to one of the very few increases chance to block on a non-shield item. Um, this is also a two-handed weapon which means that the only class in the entire game who can benefit from the increased chance of blocking is the Barbarian. So, ironically enough, if you were to create a Shield Barbarian, this would be one way that you could achieve a much higher block chance uh, by putting a really nice block chance item on in combination with the Sword Guard Executioner, you could end up with very easily a 75% block chance. And um, I believe block PvP barbarians are a, totally a thing. Um, however, this is not an endgame weapon. It is a level 48 weapon. So at level 48, you could build a relatively strong block barbarian using this weapon. Let's go over the statistics of this particular item, and we'll talk about them, shall we? So right off the bat, we have a one-handed weapon damage of 67 to 112, a two-handed weapon damage of 131 to 224. Now, of course, we're not going to look at the two-handed weapon damage because, honestly, this weapon seems to be focused around a one-handed blocker. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll look at it. Uh, we'll look at it anyway. Uh, we have a dexterity requirement of 55 and a strength requirement of 85, which is not bad for level 48. Um, it is not a particularly fast weapon uh, with a normal attack speed, so to keep that in mind. It has a really cool graphic, though, doesn't it? Uh, we also have a 20% uh, increased t faster hit recovery, uh, which is very, very nice. Uh, having bonus to faster hit recovery on anything that's not a like an armor or a shield or a helmet or something like that is always nice to have. And having it on a weapon means this is a very defensive weapon. Uh, we've also got 20% increased chance of blocking, which we've already gone over. Um, again, a very defensive mechanic. Uh, we have de defense based on character level, which again is very defensive. It, it is uh, from 5 to 495 based on character level. So at level 99, you would get 495 extra defense, which um, let's go uh, pop our shouts real quick. And uh, I want to show you what kind of difference when you're talking about a shout barbarian. Hold on, I didn't do the shouts twice. You gotta do the shouts twice. Because one of them is a plus to skills, which in, then enhances the others. And uh, so let's take a look at our defense right now. We've got 17,771. Oh, 777. And uh, we put on our Sword Guard Executioner Sword. And notice we go from 17k to 21,000. So a pretty big, hefty bump in defense there from this weapon. So so we're looking at the, the weapon right now, and what I'm seeing is a really, really defensive weapon. Um, not only does it encourage you to use a shield, it also gives you multiple defensive mechanics, and we're not even done. We also have 200 defense versus missile, which is uh, versus melee, sorry, which is an extra 200 defense on top of that, and then another 100 defense versus missile, which is also pretty darn epic. Uh, when you consider that we've already got 21,000 defense, we might as well just stack on more. Just be the defense king. Why not? And then uh, we've got all resistances 20, which is definitely another defensive mechanic. So we've got even more defensive mechanics on this thing. And then 30% damage taken goes to mana, uh, which is absolutely great if you're a Whirlwind Barbarian or any kind of melee character, because you're usually in there getting beat up, and every time you get hit, um, it's going to give you a rather nice bump to your uh, to your, to your mana pool. If you're unaware of the way that uh, damage taken goes to mana works, I do have an entire video on it, but I'll go over it briefly. Uh, basically what it is, is it takes the damage that comes in that is physical only, and it converts physical damage into mana, um, but you still take the damage. So if you were to get hit for 100 damage uh, for your mana pool, your health pool, you would still take 100 damage, but 30% of that, so 30 would go straight to your mana, and you would get 30 mana as well. So you would take 100 damage, and you would also heal 30 mana, which is really, really effective. Um, it also has negative 50% requirements on it, which means that um, it has really, really low requirements for a, uh, a char any character who would like to use this. Uh, you could probably use this on a sorceress, even. Um, now, you can also find the Sword Guard Executioner Sword in the Ethereal form, uh, which has a one-handed weapon damage of 100 to 168, 
and a two-handed weapon damage of 196 to 336, which is fairly nice. Um, it does have a dexterity requirement of 45 and a strength requirement of 75 with the same level requirement of 48. Now, um, this particular weapon can be upgraded. And uh, if you were to use the ethereal version, you would have to put a Zod in it, uh, which unfortunately would increase the level. So if we take this Zod right here and we put this in here at level 48, it's going to bump it up to level 70. Uh, sorry, 69, which is uh, a much higher level than it was before. Um, now, let's go ahead and uh, upgrade these, and we'll see what kind of uh, effects we get. So we're going to need Pull Runes, and we're going to need Lum Runes. Hopefully I've got a couple Lummies laying around. Lummy, Lummy, Lummies. And we're going to need Perfect Emeralds. So let's take the uh, non-ethereal version first, and we'll go ahead and upgrade these. So we got uh, 67 to 112 damage, 131 to 224 damage, 55 dex, 50, 85 strength, and level 48, which increases to 70 to 182 damage, 162 to 322 two-handed, 55 uh, dexterity, 95 strength, and level 70. So the stats on this really didn't go up very much uh, because of that huge negative 50% requirements. It's still a relatively low stat sword, uh, which is quite nice. Uh, now, of course, with the um, Colossus Blade in its non-ethereal form, you can also socket it, um, and you could put you know something in there, like, for instance, maybe a, a shale to make it go faster, or perhaps you would uh, put something in there to increase the damage. Um, it depends on what you're doing with this particular weapon. Uh, we also have the Sword Guard Executioner Sword in its ethereal form. And uh, so let's upgrade this one. So we got uh, 100 to 168, 196 to 336, which upgrades to 103 to 271 with 243 to 481 two-handed damage. Um, unfortunately, uh, if we were using this with a shield, we wouldn't get that nice two-handed damage. We would be stuck with the 103 to 271. But still, a really, really nice sword. Um, honestly, I could see some really niche uses for this sword. Um, let's. Uh, so, so in Lord of the Rings Online, story time, um, I played a, uh, a captain. Uh, my name was Sherwood. Um, I don't know if any of you guys watching my videos have ever seen me, in, uh, I, but I was pretty much one of the top captains in Brandywine PvP. And um, I used to love to PvP, but one of the things that really bothered me was when I was in the raids, uh, I started to become very well known, and they would target me specifically to try and kill me. And so what I like to do is I like to have a turtle set up, basically um, so that in the event that I would get targeted, I could swap to this setup and become extremely tanky very quickly. Um, and uh, what I did was is I had a very tanky sword specifically set up to make me as tanky as possible, and I had a very tanky shield specifically set up to make me as tanky as possible. And uh, and this is what this really kind of like calls to me. It calls to me and it says, it says you know, Sherwood, uh, you could have used this sword in uh, Lord of the Rings Online. You could have, you could have been unkillable in uh, Lord of the Rings Online. And I would have, uh, I would have loved to have this kind of a weapon, specifically for my uh, my captain, because uh, it would have made him nigh unkillable in the way that I was using it. Now, this may not be Lord of the Rings Online. But it is a game where sometimes you will find yourself in very dire straits. Maybe you have uh, been surrounded by cows. Uh, maybe you would just like to, um, to before you go into a portal, maybe you would like to just ensure that you're staying alive. Maybe you're a hardcore character, and you would like that extra security in knowing that when you go through a portal, um, you might you know, load on the other side alive. This could be something that you could do. Um, you could have a, uh, a Storm Shield Monarch probably, um, you know, uh, socket it with something that makes it even more defensible. Um, you could have a uh, Sword Guard Colossus Blade on one hand, and then uh, you could, you know, socket this with something that uh, would make it even more defensible. And then you could just simply swap to it um, when you are not... Um, worried about damage, and you're more worried about survivability. Um, like, for instance, one of the prime ways, believe it or not, that hardcore characters die is booby-trapped cow portals. And, uh, and if you'd like to take that chance anyway and go through the cow portal, you would probably equip your most defensive equipment. Um, turn off your run walk because walking, of course, ruins your de running, of course, ruins your defense. As you can see, my defense goes away. So going through the portal with 21,000 defense, a sword guard in one hand, a monarch shield in the other, and perhaps my most defensible equipment other than that, 
there's probably a good chance I'm going to be alive on the other side when the game finishes loading me in. Whereas if I might be using my regular equipment with no shield and no defensive mechanics, you can see my defense goes way down. Um, so it could be, be very easily a swap to specifically for defensive mechanic, just the same way that I did in Lord of the Rings Online. Um, I could, you know, be in the middle of a battle. Let's say, for instance, um, I am whirlwinding uh, with my dual spec. So I've got my dual spec. Let's switch to uh, to this. And, uh, you know, I'm whirlwinding, and maybe I'm having trouble. I'm dying. I'm going to switch over to my uh, my defensive set. And uh, my defensive set is going to help keep me alive and, uh, and make sure that I don't die so quickly. And then once I've uh, popped a couple potions, once I feel like I'm uh, safe or that particular monster that is uh, challenging my life is gone, I could swap back. And uh, thankfully, because Whirlwind does not remove your defense, you could also just simply Whirlwind with the, uh, the Sword Guard on. Um, and then when you feel like you're okay, you could swap back to your other set, and you could start Whirlwinding on that one. And it's not exactly a bad idea to have... God, the freaking Spike Fiends are the worst. I'm so glad I had this uh, uh, these Spike Fiends here to, uh, to torment me. Uh, and I, they almost killed me. You saw, I don't know if you saw that, but they almost killed me. And then I swapped to the sword guard, and I was perfectly fine. And they couldn't do anything. I was there. I was just kind of laughing at them while they were trying, which was uh, which was pretty funny. So you know, if you're running along, you've got your regular setup. You could have the sword guard, and you could have the uh, the monarch on your other hand, just so you could swap and instantly obtain max block. And then you could, of course, swap back. Um, when you know when you need it, which which seems like an interesting concept. Um, I also actually have a shield barbarian um, that I have built, and he's quite fun. Um, he's not the most optimal character in the world, but he's definitely a fun character, and um, and I've been having a lot of fun uh, playing around with 75% block chance and uh, and being as tanky as humanly possible. So uh, you know, if you want to make a barbarian who's super duper 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 tanky, then uh, sword guard might be the sword for you. Um, you know, theoretically, you could also just use two of them, and uh, and you could have even more defense. I mean, uh, I mean, why not? Let's see what let's see what happens when we uh, when we shout with uh, with two of them. Granted, we'll lose the uh, the block chance, but we will get forty percent faster um, hit recovery. We will get uh, the uh, four hundred ninety five defense times two. We will also get the uh, all resistances times two, and the uh, two times the damage taken goes to mana as well. Could be kind of fun to see what happens. Of course, we won't have the block chance, which is unfortunate. But, uh, but you know, tis what it is. Very, very defensive weapons. I'm not fearing for my life, I'll tell you that much. Not really doing an amazing amount of damage, but I'm not fearing for my life. What's up, Shanky Poo? But, you know, amazing amount of damage is not what these swords are about. They're about being ridiculously defensible. Anyway, I think I've gone over just about everything I can on these uh, swords. Uh, let's talk about really quickly um, where you can find them. Uh, so let's look up Sword Guard. So Sword Guard is a uh, Treasure Class 54 Q Level 55 item, uh, which means you're probably going to find it at Treasure Class 57. Uh, which, if I remember correctly, um, without even looking up the area level, is probably Act 3, Nightmare and Above. Um, I'm pretty sure Act 3, Nightmare and Above, you're talking about like Mephisto, and then uh, act most of Act 4 and Act 5 in Nightmare difficulty. And all of Hell difficulty will probably drop this item as well. Um, uh, let me just take a quick look at the area level list, though. Let me make sure I'm right on this. Because I do know um, Act 3 in Nightmare difficulty is a little wonky with the levels uh so we've got yeah like, like like not not all of act three difficulty but some of act three difficulty can drop the item like durance of hate i guess a mephisto most of most of the end areas and then act four difficulty pretty much or act four nightmare difficulty pretty much all of act four um including act five uh, we'll drop it. Um, you can probably also get it from cows. Let me do one quick check. God, so many little doo -doo 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 Give me the boo-boo farms. 
I know what Moo Moo Farms is. Moo Moo Farms is level 64, so yes. Uh, Moo Moo Farms will drop the, uh, the item as well. So you could farm a Nightmare Difficulty Cows, and that would also be an option. Anyway, as always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching these videos, um, even when they are on silly items like Sword Guard, and uh, keep watching.